Do we begin with Nathaniel Hackett, who we all know on Monday night made a stupid decision. And it's interesting because when I do this show, I also have years of training of having reacted to news that's already been processed throughout the day, having hosted the night show multiple places. I was originally the night show host in Kansas City before going to mornings. I was the night show host in Miami. I was the night show host in Boston. And here at CBS Sports Radio, we were overnights and then evenings. And so my mind is trained to wait to see how everybody reacts to a story over the course of the day and then try to find a new angle because you got to try to be fresh and different and unique. And here was this decision by Nathaniel Hackett, and I knew the entire day, 99.5% of sports talk hosts, sports bloviators, sports opinionists were just going to totally crush Hackett because there really wasn't a defensible opposite argument. And so when that happens, I'm not going to spend four hours hammering something that you're going to hear hammered the same exact way. It's a binary thing. Either Nathaniel Hackett was right or Nathaniel Hackett was wrong, and it was overwhelmingly the wrong decision. And what are you going to do? Smash the guy for four hours before all of you hear the next 12 hours of smashing? So yesterday, I didn't really even focus on that. I mean, it was a thing, but it was not something that I wanted to delve into too much. I found it far more interesting that, A, what could it mean for the Russell Wilson-Nathaniel Hackett dynamic, and B, that the Seattle fans were vicious towards Russell Wilson, a guy that they had serenaded and, and celebrated for a decade. I did think, however, that like most young coaches, Hackett is going to end up Falling on the sword, it was the right decision. I would do it the same way and never admit a weakness because you're already a young coach. You're trying to fight for credibility. And if you start admitting mistakes, that erodes that credibility quickly. And I'm like, he's never going to admit that he was wrong, even though we all know he was wrong. We had Rex Ryan on the show yesterday, and Rex Ryan just laughed. He said he'll regret that decision forever. And he said that sometimes coaches panic, especially young coaches, which is what that was. It was a panic move, and Nathaniel Hackett had an idea in his head, and because everything is swirling in the middle of a game at the end of a game, he was paralyzed to only go with what the game plan was. If we make the 46-yard line, Brandon McManus comes out. We made the 46-yard line, Brandon McManus comes out. And that was all he could do in that moment. He panicked. He froze. But it was a mistake. Because, of course, what what do the odds in every silo of this decision-making say? Would you rather have the ball... Would you rather have the game decided by Russell Wilson, future Hall of Famer, or Brandon McManus? Would you rather have the decision or rather have the game come down to a field goal McManus has never made? He has never made a 62-yarder, let alone a 64-yarder. Of course not. The answer is always no. And analytics will tell you odds of picking up fourth and five are better than making a 64-yard field goal. So there was no silo you could go back on and say, yeah, but. But I didn't think he was going to admit the mistake because he doesn't have enough credibility in the well to admit the mistake. And to Nathaniel Hackett's credit, he reversed course yesterday. Looking back at it, we definitely should have gone for it. Just not, not, you know, one of those things. You look back at it and you say, of course we should go for it. We missed the field goal. But in that situation, we had a plan. I mean, we had a plan. We knew that the 46 was the mark. Uh, we were third and 15, I think, third and 13. I'm more upset about that play before it to lose yards, to be able to, you know, getting that there would have definitely uh, been better to be able to call that same play and get extra yards. And good on Nathaniel Hackett. Good on Nathaniel Hackett because, number one, 
it's an obvious mistake. And when you make obvious mistakes, you can own it and move on. And it's way better than just digging yourself into that grave, which we all do. At work, you get called out. You're like, yeah, yeah, but, but, but. You get in a fight with your spouse. Yeah, but, 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 but. You get met with your own mistake and you start, we all do this, rationalizing why the mistake was made. And Hackett initially did that, but then realized, I'm just going to own it. And that's so much better. Because today, Russell Wilson can, with a straight face and honesty, say, okay, I believe the next situation is going to be different, and the ball's in my hands, and my coach trusts me. And the offense can go out and say, next situation, that guy's going to make a different decision and trust us. And the defense can go out and say, we believe in this head coach because we all know that was a mistake. But he's admitted he wouldn't make it again. You can move forward and you can build trust. And you now have more credibility because you admitted I was wrong. A lot of people can't do that. The other part of this is it's amazing how refreshing it is to hear a coach admit a mistake. It never happens. A coach makes a decision and he has baked into it all of this rationale, which Hackett just admits there. In our mind, in my decision-making, if we made the 46, we were going to kick the field goal. We made the 46. And so there was no, well, process, better, odds. That was it. That was the line. And sometimes in the NFL and probably other coaching spots as well, you have to just make hard lines so that you can make quick decisions. If this happens, then this. If this happens, then this. If we make the 46, we kick the field goal. And because you've baked in time, analytics, experience, and you've weighed all these things, you don't want to admit the mistake because then it suggests that all of that other stuff that went into it was a mistake. But hack it is coming clean here, and that is refreshing. Coaches don't do this. There is such a cloak of I'm right and machismo and ego and power, and you just you can't admit weakness. You're not allowed to, at least in their minds. And the biggest cop-out ever, and I just I I dry heave every time I hear it, is when a team loses and the coach comes out and says, we got to play better, we got to coach better. Well, what does that mean? It's the biggest cop-out ever because you are putting yourself in there, but you're not you're not expressing any specifics. We got to coach better. It would be like, you know, if this show had dire ratings and no revenue and no popularity and affiliates hated it. And my bosses were like, oh, what are you going to do? And, he, and I just was, I just said, well, I'm going to have to host better. Well, what does that mean? Well, you know what? We're just going to have to execute better. Yeah, but how? What's your specifics? What's the plan? You know, just going to have to host better, execute better, you know, hit the brakes and, uh, you know, just try to do things a little bit better. What does that mean? And so coaches hide behind this all the time. It looks like they're taking responsibility but they're really not because it's so vague, it could mean anything. Got to coach better. And that's on me. We got to coach better. You know, we got to execute better. That's on me. What does that mean? Nathaniel Hackett just proved what it means. When I have fourth and five and Russell Wilson, I will not kick the field goal. That's coaching. That's I got to coach better. That's it's on me. That's evidence. I don't know if Hackett's going to be good. I hear a lot of people that I respect say he's going to be good. We'll see. We'll see. But I like this. Tell me you were wrong when we all knew you were wrong, and now you got credibility because that is I'm going to coach better.